plus 10 R. This is the Realme GT Neo 3 and this comes in two variants, a variant with 80 watt fast charging and a variant with 150 watt fast charging. We have the 150 watt one and this has two exciting features. One is obviously the crazy fast 150 watt charging and the second is the new powerful Dimensity 8100 chipset. So let's check it out. Before we begin, I want to give a huge shout out to Wondershare FamiSafe, which is a powerful parental control app that lets you track your kid's screen time so you can set limits and create schedules. You can also use FamiSafe to track the real-time location of your kids and get alerts. It also detects any inappropriate photos or videos on your kid's device. There are a lot more features in FamiSafe and it's available on Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Chrome and Kindle. So check it out from the link down below. This is the Realme GT Neo 3 and I'll talk about the other aspects of this phone, but I'm going to start with two exciting features. So the Realme GT Neo 3 has a 4,500 image battery, but that's kind of fine, normal. What's interesting is that this phone comes with a 150 watt ultra dark charger. This is a big ass charger and it's a USB-C PD charger as you can see. Plus another interesting thing about this is that this is actually a 160 watt charger. If you look closely, you can see the 20 volt 8 ampere text, which basically means 160 watts. The truth is this is a 160 watt GAN charger, but this charges at 150 watts. Now, if you're wondering what GAN is, well, you can read about it in our article down below. But the gist is GAN charges are smaller in size, faster, but more energy efficient. Anyway, let's get to the point. How fast is this 150 watt charger? So I put the GT Neo 3 with its 150 watt ultra dark charger versus Xiaomi 11i and its 120 watt hyper charger. Now I started the test at 10% and after just two minutes, the GT Neo 3 is already at 30% charge. But what's interesting is that the Xiaomi 11i is also close at 28% with its 120 watt charger. Now, Realme had claimed 50% in five minutes, but after five minutes, the GT Neo 3 is 46%. Still impressive, but yeah, falls a bit short. Now, what's interesting again is that the Xiaomi 11i is ahead of the GT Neo 3 at 47% battery. Now, do note that I had enabled rapid charge in the GT Neo 3 and boost charging speed in the Xiaomi 11i hypercharge. Anyway, after 10 minutes, the Xiaomi 11i is way ahead at 75%, while the GT Neo 3 strangely is quite behind at 65%. Now this margin cuts down till the end, but the Xiaomi 11i's 120 watt charger is just faster. It charged the phone fully from 10 to 100% in 18 minutes, while the GT Neo 3 took 19 minutes. I know it's a difference of only a minute, but I was honestly expecting the 150 watt charger to be the 120 watt charger. It's strange really. Now, I'm not sure what's happening here because we did the charging test again and the results were kind of similar. Now you must have noticed that this phone has a rapid charging option that you can enable, but when I tested things, the charging speed without the rapid charging mode was faster. The phone took 19 minutes with the rapid mode on and it took 16 minutes to go from 10 to 100% with rapid charging off. Basically, the 150 watt ultra dark charger is crazy fast. I mean, 16 to 19 minutes to fully charge a phone is still insane. But the truth is, it does not be the 120 watt hypercharger on the Xiaomi 11i hypercharge, which is a bit weird. As for the battery health and heating, we did not come across any heating issues. The phone was normal during charging. And as for the battery health, the GT Neo 3 has the TUV Rhineland Safe Fast Charging System certification. And is also said to be 38 layers of safety. And Realme says that the battery will keep 80% of its lifespan after 1600 charge and discharge cycles. Now this sounds better because I remember Xiaomi saying the same 80% number, but after 800 cycles with the 120 watt hypercharge. Now coming to the second big highlight, the GT Neo 3 is the first phone we have tested with the new Dimensity 8100 chipset. Yeah, the OnePlus 10R isn't here yet. Now the Dimensity 8100 is based on the TSMC's 5 nanometer process and along with the new chipset, there's fast LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage. Anyway, the focus is on the Dimensity 8100 and when we ran the benchmark scores, I found the performance of the Dimensity 8100 to be very, very close to the Snapdragon 888 on the likes of iQOO 9 SE or the OnePlus 9 RT. I mean, here's the Android score and you can see how close things are when it comes to the overall score and the CPU score. The Snapdragon 888 does better on the GPU front and this is noticeable in the 3D Mark score too. When it comes to Geekbench, the 888 scores higher in single core, but the Dimensity 8100 is way ahead in terms of multi-core score. 
We also ran the CPU throttling test. I enabled the GT mode on the GT Neo 3 and the high performance mode in the OnePlus 9RT. And these are the scores after the 30 minute 50 threads test. Yeah, both these phones performed very well, throttling to the same 82%. The performance numbers on the GT Neo 3 are higher, both the max and the average numbers. We also did the 100 threads one hour test and in this test too, the phones did well. The GT Neo 3 throttled to 79% and the 9RT was marginally better at 81%, but yeah, very close. And once again, the performance numbers of the GT Neo 3 are higher. I also checked the temperatures after the last test and the GT Neo 3 was around 44 degrees while the 9RT was around 42 degrees. And as for the battery drain, the GT Neo 3 lost 27% battery in this test, while the 9RT lost 31% battery. Both these phones have the same battery capacity as you know. Overall, the point is the Dimensity 8100's performance is very close to the Snapdragon 888, which is very good actually. As for optimization in games, BGMI only supports HD and high settings on the Dimensity 8100, but other games support the max graphics. PUBG New State has support for 90 FPS gaming, like on 888. COD Mobile has the very high graphics and max FPS options available, but you can't choose both of them together. This is something you can do in Snapdragon 888. I mean, the Dimensity 8100 is still a newer chipset, so I understand that not all games are optimized for this new chipset, but I'm hoping MediaTek works with developers to bring the highest graphic settings in games in these new chipsets. These tests and numbers are power when it comes to using the phone, the GT Neo 3 feels like a high-end phone. It is fast and snappy when launching apps and multitasking. Gaming is good too, especially something like New State which supports 90 FPS gaming on this phone. The phone also has a stainless steel vapor chamber cooling system and I did notice the phone getting cool after tests more quickly. Moving on to the other features in the phone, the specs of the display are good, but more importantly, the display looks beautiful. The color accuracy is good, so are the blacks. It's also bright and the high refresh rate is noticeable here. The phone also has studio speakers, which can get quite loud and the clarity is good too. The phone has support for Widevine L1 license, so there's full HD playback in Netflix, Prime Video and other apps, although there's no HDR support in Netflix. The phone comes with Realme UI 2.0 based on Android 12 out of the box, and this is also something that helps with the overall smoothness of the phone. The animations, the UI seems to be optimized for the 120Hz screen and it's nice to use. What's not nice is the amount of bloatware in this phone. Let me go on a rant here. I mean, first of all, there are so many third-party apps pre-installed on the phone. And secondly, there are a lot of bloatware apps from Realme. I mean, who needs this browser when there's Chrome installed? That's all, the phone also shows these ads on the lock screen, which is insane. I mean, this is supposed to be a premium high-end phone, but these things just ruin the experience. <sighs> anyway, let's relax for a bit, but not too much because I'm also not a big fan of this design. I mean, I get it, looks are subjective, so it's totally fine if you like this, but I like phones which have a more cleaner look like the GT2 Pro. And do note that the GT Neo 3 does come in a black variant which does not have these lines. That apart, this back is a matte AG glass back and the frame is plastic. And the phone is good when it comes to size. And as for the functionality, the fingerprint scanner is in the display and it's good. But there's no micro SD slot, no headphone jack, no wireless charging and no IP data. The camera setup is also fairly good. IMX 766 has proved to be good on Realme phones. And from the photos I've taken, the camera performance seems good here too, be it in the daytime or low light. The front camera is a 16 megapixel sensor and here are some selfies from the phone. Now do note that the rear camera supports 4K 60fps video, so that's good. But Realme, Oppo, OnePlus, they're still stuck with 1080p in the front camera. When it comes to the connectivity, this is a 5G phone with 8 5G bands and support for dual 5G. There's also carrier aggregation, in fact 5C as you can see, which is really good. There's also Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3 and there's NFC as well. To conclude things, I'm expecting the Realme GT Neo 3 to be priced at around 37k for the base variant, while the 150 watt 12 256 GB variant should be around 43k. Now I know the OnePlus 10R is basically the same phone, it's identical in terms of specs and features and we will be receiving that soon so I think we'll get a better idea on this phone and that once I've used the OnePlus 10R. That apart, as of right now the Realme GT Neo 3 does seem like a good all-around package. I mean 150 watt charging is not the fastest out there but it's still insanely fast. The Dimensity 8100 seems like a very solid chipset all around, bringing performance on par with the Snapdragon 888. Yes, a phone in the sub 40k price segment should be more cleaner and there's my opinions on this design. But the rest of the phone seems pretty good so far, although I'm yet to use the phone as my daily drive. Anyway, I want to know what you think of the Realme GT Neo 3 and yeah, drop that, drop your thoughts in the comments down below. Also give this video a like, make sure to share it and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. We just got Apple's 2,30,000 rupee Mac Studio, so let's unbox this.